Hi, my name is Sam Dickinson. I'm a guitarist. Uh, I've written a little book in part of my master's degree requirements, and uh, it's all about chord voicings. I started out with two note voicings and went up all the way to six, and this video is uh, going to provide a little more insight into that, I guess, in a practical playing sense. So with the two note voicings, I talked about third and sevenths, like shells, um, which on guitar are uh, easy to do, but sometimes um, neglected. And uh, I was talking about this maybe more in a soloing context than an actual comping context, because it gets a little boring, I think, to hear only that. So in the, in the book, I did the song, uh, I Should Care, and I was going to try to demonstrate now in time, soloing around the uh, third and sevenths, embellishing them a little, trying to stick to that material. And uh, I'll play one half a uh, chorus using more inside ideas and one half a chorus outside uh, because I was saying that just as these can make you sound grounded in a diatonic sense, um, they can help you uh, ground your more outside ideas as well. So I'll try to um, stray from the more conventional melodic material um, and see if I can keep it roughly based on those thirds and sevenths. So one, two, three, four. chapter in the book is about uh, three note voicings. It uh, goes up into, um, it begins with triads and then talks a bit more about uh, outside shapes. So um, I was going to demonstrate um, some closed and open triads because this stuff on guitar is uh, its getting more popular but at first it was kind of a uh, neglected area. So I mean in the book I talk about just playing on all string groups. So say we're in C major you'd play your And then uh, playing them obviously in all keys too. But those are um, the same shapes because they're on the same groups of strings. So try them on the top, etc. And then uh, talking about playing open and closed too. So you have this, etc. And then. the whole book into a little five minute video, but that's an example of that. I talked a bit about the linear approach to playing triads, so in the book there's an example similar to uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. It gets you thinking wide intervals if you're playing um, which could be a weak point in a lot of guitar players' uh, vocabulary, but it's sort of becoming a more and more important thing to have as a guitarist in this day and age. So um, I uh, was going to try taking a solo on all the things you are and use some of those to keep it uh, to keep uh, those wide interval ideas happening. And I'll be moving things around, uh, not just sticking to the diatonic triads because that'd be a little boring. Um, so I'll play a chorus on that and then uh, talk about a few more three-note things and move on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's one uh, example of that. And you can get a little more creative with it, or when you're practicing it, you can try it in a little more of a square manner with the metronome, maybe. Um, I'm going to move along again. Uh, I'm sort of rushing through all these things, but uh, I was going to talk a bit about um, sort of a visual concept of voice leading, which is mentioned in the book. Um, as in, if you're playing things in a similar area, then and you can see them with your eyes, the, the chances are you, they're going to be... Um, I'm explaining that right, but chances are they're going to be... Uh, the voice leading is going to be smooth. So for example, if I'm playing this, then I can see that nearby there's this shape. And just by seeing them there, I know they're going to voice lead right. So, I mean, I do that. And it all sounds good. This note's going here, this note's, uh, this note's going here, and this note's going here. So. So that applies to big and small voicings alike, whether you're playing. And you can get a lot of mileage out of that, sort of noodling around and just... It, it's almost like a type of trust that lets you improvise that in a certain manner because you know it's going to voice lead. And then when you slow it down and actually listen to the individual voices, they're doing interesting things. So I talk in the book a lot about um, intervallic shapes through the chords. So I was going to uh, try comping a chorus through that um, and just talk a bit about, uh, like I guess um, this is all just kind of random uh, random shapes, but they're mostly derived from intervallic things. So for instance, that was a couple one, f one four, five kind of triad ideas. Um, and fourths are really good for this too. And then diminished things get really interesting because it's the same shape moved around. So on guitar, that's heaven. Um, so uh, I'm going to try to demonstrate on all the things. I'll do a couple of little substitutions and things, but uh, hopefully my hands are visible too, so if anything wants to be looked at in greater detail, then that's uh, possible. So one, two, three, four. example of that and uh, again I'm rushing through this stuff but if uh, I'm gonna post a link on this video hopefully to the uh, the book and you can have a little look at that um, so I was gonna talk now about um, uh, about seventh chords and um, in the book I go through a concept now that's again becoming more popular um, taking the inversions of all the seventh chords so in the book I go through all of them including the diatonic ones which a lot of people get a little afraid of because of shapes like that a lot of uh, uh, tricky stretches and things, but I demonstrate some uh, things just in the book, little examples of, uh, of the easier ones to actually play through, um, some of which are this, say, uh, which is a, you play a one, one, five, three, seven. So the, in the book we talk about working on all the inversions and being fluid enough to actually play them faster, and then going through tunes like that. So I was going to play um, all, all of those chords strictly. Um, uh, I'll do a little square at first and play a half a chorus on uh, Cole Porter's Everything I Love. Um, I'm going to be voice leading, so when it's um, when it's a seventh chord, I'll play a, a you know a one three five seven, and when it's a, a major seven chord, I'll play major seven. And I've been doing I basically what I've done is applied the exact same principle as this to all the uh, chord types. So minor seven. Ah, I didn't do that right. Uh, Etc. and then dominant seven, uh, etc. So I'll try this now and just playing half notes on everything I love. One, two, three, four. Half chord. 
course on that, and that's kind of the uh, straight ahead way. That's a great way to practice. But what's a little more interesting is if you're doing something like that and you get to uh, move things around, similar to what I was doing with the, the three note, um, the three note chord. So if you take some different examples, like uh, you know, say instead of playing this for the B seven, which is a very square sounding voicing, if I use some diminished things, so then all of a sudden you have. Now to the five note chords, um, which is essentially the same uh, the same principle, but um, as the four note, but you're adding notes, and so this is what um, I've got certain little examples in the book. Um, uh, this is not one of them, but I'll use it as an example because then you get an extra chord out of it. Uh, so, for instance, you've got that shape we just talked about. A great way to create five note chords is just to add an extra note. So, for instance, there's the third sharp eleven in there. And that's a little hard to play, but there's some easier to play versions. So if we're going to stick with the sharp eleven idea, then here's uh, seven three five one, and we can add the sharp eleven down below. So that's a good example of a C major seven sharp eleven chord, and you can find these all over the place, and uh, just just basically by adding notes. And that one you couldn't reach obviously because of this, but. There's a lot of different examples of that. And then you can get more creative with them. For instance, uh, the flat nine is there. And then you can add combinations of the two. So this is to get to six notes chords, all of a sudden you can add more than one thing. So if you want a flat nine sharp 11, flat nine with a natural 13, flat nine with a flat 13, things are getting darker. Um, and you can do it in a totally consonant way too. For example, uh, there's one way to play C major seven. You can add the extra notes. There's the thirteen and the nine. And you've got a beautiful six note chord you might not have had if you didn't uh, read the book. No. Um, so I've got uh, there's a few more examples of that. Um, but the the last part of the six note voicings is dealing with hexatonics, which is something largely unexplored in a harmonic context, even on the piano. Although Jerry Bergonzi has gotten into this a lot. And um, on guitar, it's still unexplored territory, but on guitar, it's actually it's, uh, very interesting because if you look at two triads, there's only certain ways you can actually play the two simultaneously. So, for example, there's this grips a lot of us know, like um, uh, E over B flat. So, if you play these at the same time, they have a real lush sort of sound, these chords. And that one's actually, it happens to be diminished, so you can move it up however you want. But some more interesting ones are maybe uh, the two minor triads. So this is a thing mostly used for soloing. Jerry Bergonzi has a book on this, and it's all deal dealing with soloing rather than uh, harmony. But uh, you know, in soloing, it would sound like uh, 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 sorry, I'm doing that out of order. But when you play the notes at the same time, you get some very interesting sounds, like this, for example. There's only certain ways to play them on guitar, so these are a few I've actually found out. And uh, it's very interesting because you can find your own. If you know what the notes are, you can just think, okay, here I've got this, and maybe this is playable, that's these, so all I have to do is add, okay, I'd like to add the natural D, I can find that there as an open string, oh, there's an A. You're kind of just finding things as they come along, and then what's missing, oh, the A flat, and there's that voicing. And then uh, the same thing you could use soloing, for example. So if I was going to play the, um, you could use that all over a good D seven or G seven rather. So that could use that. You could use that for a G seven chord all of a sudden, and it's a it's a very dark and uh, gloomy voicing. But it's um, it's it's interesting. You can use that in. Uh, you can sneak them into your playing if you voice lead right too, for example. So if you're if you're playing, uh, you know, a turnaround. There's 
there's always a way to work these things in if you sort of sneak it in. And I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely not uh, your most straight ahead sound, but it's definitely applicable as well. So I've combined a lot of those voicings um, into my sort of solo guitar playing, and I thought I'd finish the video with uh, my rendition of I Fall In Love Too Easily, which uses a lot of these things and then goes in and out of them too, and I'm not going to explain what's happening, and it's not all necessarily an arrangement either, I have a lot of this will just be on the fly too, but um, hopefully this encapsulates a lot of what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm.